Oh my God, oh my God. God said he's going to be with me. Hey, yeah. God said it. God said he would be with me. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. God said it. God said he would be with me. He'll be with me. God said he would be with me. He'll be with me. God said he would be with me. Come on, everybody, say it. God said it. God said he would be with me. He'll be with me. God said he would be with me. He'll be with me. God said he would be with me. Oh, he'll be with me. God said he would be with me. This is the good part. Through the storm. Believe it tonight. He'll be with me. God said he would be with me. Yeah, he'll be with me. God said he would be with me. She God said it. God said he would be with me. He'll be with me. God yeah. said he would be with me. Oh, he'll be with me. God said he would be with me. He'll be with me. God said he would be with me. Hey. So through the storm.
He said it in his word. I'll never leave you. I won't forsake you. I'll be with you always. Even to the end of the earth. Listen to this, listen. 
acknowledge the leadership of the organization that we belong to and we are members of the Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith International where our presiding bishop is Bishop Lambert W. Gates Sr. Our Our assistant presiding bishop is Bishop Michael E. Ford, Sr. And I want to acknowledge our council leadership of the Eastern and Southern States Council, Bishop John T. Leslie, Jr., Diocesan Bishop, Bishop Gilbert Edwards is our council chairman, and Suffolk and Bishop Alan Fleet is our assistant council chairman. And just want to acknowledge them today and I ask you to stand with me in reverence to the reading of the word of God. We're going to read part of one scripture. Part of one scripture. Jude 24. There's only one chapter in Jude, so we just go by the verses. Jude 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Since we're using brevity today, I'll go ahead and read it again. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And I'm going to come from the subject today, and this will sound familiar, but there is a major distinction which I'll explain in my conclusion. I'm falling, but I can get up. I'm falling, but I can get up. Lord, we thank you for this word that you're about to send, and we thank you for the anointing that is resident in the house, and we thank you for the Eastern and Southern States Council and the leadership. We thank you for New Life Family Worship Center, and we ask you right now to send an anointing that makes preaching easy, to put a spirit in this place that will be a blessing beyond our imaginations. Give me clarity of thought and nimbleness of speech. Bless everyone that hears and experiences this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am in a quandary today, which I've been in before, and, and the Lord has always worked it out, so I'm sure that he will again. But I'm in a quandary today that I feel a message in a, position, in a place or in a way that I was unable to write it down. Sometimes something just gets in your spirit. And when you go to type it up, it just doesn't look right in print. But you know God is saying something. Tonight, today, I want to be an encouragement to people. I feel that part of the ministry of the fivefold is to encourage the people of God. I remember... I shouldn't tell this story. I remember growing up one time, I did something really bad, really bad. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because that's between me and my mother. But I did something really bad, and I braced for impact. I braced for impact because my mother was strict, and she didn't suffer fools lightly. And, and I knew I was wrong. Sometimes you know you're wrong. And you can talk back to me. Sometimes you know you're wrong. And I braced for impact, and she, she shocked me. And instead of punishing me, she showed me mercy and grace. And I can tell you from this, from this pulpit, in, in all sincerity and honesty, I never made that mistake again. Because I was overwhelmed by her showing of mercy as opposed to punishment. Sometimes we need to just encourage the people of God. It gets hard out there, and, and we need to encourage the people of God. And today is going to be a message of encouragement, and the key word in our subject today is falling. Can somebody say falling? And, and it says, my topic is I'm falling, but I can get up. And I know we basically understand what the meaning of fall is, but I wanted to give this definition because I'm going to refer to it later in, the, in this text. And, 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 and the writer, Jude, uses it, so I, 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 I wanted to make sure we understand what we're talking about. 
And to fall when it regards a person means to lose one's balance and collapse. Can somebody say and collapse? That's significant because if you simply lose your balance but don't collapse, you didn't fall. I need to make that plain. You didn't fall. You just lost your balance. But, but, but if you lose your balance and collapse, then you have been falling or you have fallen. And people today are in the process of falling. People, we use it in the church vernacular, we say they're falling by the wayside. Many are falling, many are slipping, many are having trouble. And I was in before the Lord, and, and I, the Lord, what is causing the people of God to fall? Uh, my friend that I love, and I call him friend because I want him to be my friend, but I don't know him, but Donnie McClurkin. But I'll call him friend. I'll claim the friendship. My friend and brother Donnie McClurkin wrote a song a decade or so ago and said, we fall down, but we get up. And I know the overly deep and those who spend nights in heaven and not on earth. And they said that was a song of weakness, but I disagree. I think that's a song of reality because we all sin and do fall short of the glory of God. What? It's causing the people of God to fall. Number one is the hardness of the way. I'm going to be real with you. Sometimes it just gets hard. Sometimes it just gets hard. It's, it's sometimes it seems like whatever you're trying to do just does not work out. There's a phrase out there that says, I'll, you know, as soon as I can get my ends to meet, I will be able to do X, Y, and Z, or I'm trying to get my ends to meet. I lived a period of years without my ends ever seeing each other. They didn't meet at all. They didn't even see each other. They weren't even in the same area code. Now, so y'all can act holy, super holy if you want, but I understand somebody is dealing with the hardness of the way. Well, my, my good friend, God rest her soul, uh, Evangelist Scott, Georgetta, and Larry's mother, we used to play a game with her. And what would she tell you, Brother Bill? It's so hard, Brother Bill. It's so hard, Brother Bill. Look at somebody and tell them it gets so hard sometimes. It gets so hard, and, and it sometimes, and, and I, I'm not trying to be deep today. I'm not trying to be revelatory. I'm trying to be real. Sometimes you try everything, and it just doesn't work out. Sometimes your money doesn't add up to the bills that you have due. Sometimes the kids that you raise don't, don't, rec don't look like they came out of your house. Oh, come on, somebody. Sometimes you work that job the best you could work it, and they still tell you, we don't need your services anymore. Sometimes everything you try, it seems like it's not adding up. But I'm here to let you know God is still faithful. Oh, God. But if you're not careful, the hardness will cause you to stumble and fall. Because the devil will whisper in your ear and say, if the Lord really loved you, you wouldn't be going through this. If he really loved you, you wouldn't be broke. If he really loved you, you wouldn't be struggling like this. But I'm here to let you know, not only does he really love me, not only does he love me now, he's always loved me. He always will love me. And there is therefore now no temptation taken me that is common to man. But in it, he's already made a way for my escape. It's hard. I might be falling, but I can get up. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Something, this leads me to the next reason. That we get stumbled sometimes and we fall sometimes. Uh, sometimes, and I'll, I'll give you a, 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 a proper way of saying it, but then we can get real with it. Uh, sometimes we get upset because of the prosperity of the wicked. 
All right, y'all didn't like that. Sometimes we get upset because our unsaved friends seem to be doing better than what we're doing. Okay, act like that don't happen to you. Sometimes the guy across the street with his beer and his alcohol has no trouble paying his bills, but you're paying your tithe and you're still struggling. Now, somebody that sometimes the people at work are bragging about Aruba and Maui and you can't even get downtown. Now, sometimes the people who aren't living a thing for God are seemingly, seemingly, seemingly uh, doing better, uh, and you're always struggling. David wrote, uh, my feet had almost stumbled. Uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't David, it was Asap. Uh, my feet had almost stumbled. Uh, my steps nearly had nearly slipped uh, because I envied the arrogant, uh, and I um observed uh, how the wicked are well off. Uh, we need to be honest with ourselves sometimes uh, because if we try to hide from our real emotions, uh, then the devil can use the darkness of our feelings uh, to work against us. Uh, and we look around at people uh, who don't love God uh, or who we think don't love God uh, and they're doing well uh, and we're struggling. Uh, but I'm here to tell you today uh, that God does look out for you. Uh, God does love you. Uh, don't worry about what's going on around you uh, because you need to know uh, that God is with you uh, even though it looks like he's with somebody else. Uh, I had a friend one day, uh, and he used to get, I used to get mad at him, and he loved God, uh, but I used to get mad at him, because uh, every time he picked me up, uh, he was bragging about something else God did for him. Uh, God did this, uh, and God did that, uh, and God gave him money, uh, and he just got a new car, uh, and it got too much for me. It got to the point, uh, I didn't want to ride with him anymore, because uh, I was struggling, uh, and he was being blessed. Uh, I got in the car one day and he went at it again. And I told him, shut up. You think God don't love nobody but you. But you know what? I waited on God and now I got a testimony. Hey, I don't have to look uh, and see what God is doing uh, in the, somebody else's life. Uh, I can look in my house. Uh, I can look in my family. Uh, I can look in my pocketbook. Uh, I can look in my circumstance uh, and see that God is real. Uh, but let me give you the real testimony. Uh, before I saw uh, the fullness of the Lord, uh, I sure saw him uh, show up uh, in the middle uh, of my circumstance. Uh, before you see money, uh, find him in your circumstance. Uh, before you see deliverance, uh, find him in your illness. Uh, before you see a victory, uh, find him in defeat. Uh, shout hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, look at somebody and say, just find him. Just find him. Stop looking around at everybody else. Just find him. Stop looking at somebody else's miracle. Find him for yourself. Stop looking at somebody else's goodness. Find him for yourself. He's there. Tell somebody else, just find him. Finally, and I'm going to close this out real soon. Finally, we get upset. We start to fall because of the delay and the fulfillment of our desires. I'm here to tell you, the scripture says that, that, that be not weary in well-doing because you shall reap if you faint not. Can I tell you the main thing I get from that scripture? Doing well will wear you out. Most of us, and you don't have to admit it if you want to, if you don't want to, but it would help us all if you do admit it. Some of us are just tired of waiting. Oh, God, we've been waiting a long time. We've been waiting for the deliverance. We've had things before him, so many things that we can't remember everything that we're waiting on. We just know you're waiting. How many have prophecies that you've been waiting to come to pass? And you got so many of them, you don't want nobody else to give you another word until the last word you receive 
comes through. Uh, oh, I know y'all don't want to give you this. This ain't in my notes, but I'm going to lay this on you. Uh, some of y'all uh, are trying to measure God uh, and whether he's going to show up uh, based upon your watch and your calendar. Uh, but a day uh, is as a thousand days, uh, saith the Lord. Uh, you say, God, uh, I've been going through this uh, for six years. Uh, and God says, uh, according to my heavenly calendar, uh, it's only been six minutes. Uh, because his calendar, uh, his watch, uh, it's not like your watch. So you are tired. You're tired of waiting. Paul says twice, let us not be weary. In other words, let us not faint. Here's that word again. Let us not fall. Let us not fall. In other words, let us not be weary in well-doing. Let me repeat now. Let us not fall while we're doing well. Let us not allow the problem of waiting for him to show up to cause us to fall. I know this is a very popular scripture, but I feel like reading it tonight because I believe it will bless somebody. Isaiah uh, was talking with the children of Judah, uh, and they were waiting for God to show up. Uh, and Isaiah said to them, uh, Has thou not known, uh, has thou not heard, uh, that the everlasting God, uh, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, uh, fainteth not, uh, neither is weary. Uh, there is no searching of his understanding. Uh, he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even that you shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I'm here to remind you today that even though it looks like you're getting ready to fall, they that wait, he's going to swoop in and undergird you uh, and hold you up uh, and lift you up uh, and stop you uh, from falling. Uh, he's going to protect you uh, when it looks like uh, you're getting ready to fall. Uh, I need somebody uh, who's in the midst of a fall uh, to jump to your feet uh, and say, I will not fall. Uh, I will not fall. Uh, I will I will. Give me one minute, Bishop. I'm going to need your help, but give me one minute. I'm here to let you know today that even though the circumstance looks really bad, I'm here to let you know that the scripture says they that wait shall renew their strength. Why am I going to have to have renewed strength? It's because in the middle of your waiting, while you're still waiting, God is going to step in and give you strength to wait some more. Some of you think the only way God blesses you is by delivering you. But he's greater than his ability to deliver. He's able to keep you. If he never does it, you don't have to fall. If he never does it, you don't have to stumble. They that wait shall be renewed. Somebody who's been waiting, renewal is coming. It's in the atmosphere. You're going to have strength. You're going to have a smile. You're going to have peace. You're going to have joy. And at the end of the day, you're going to be able to say, I waited. And he showed up. I waited when I was about to fall. He came out of nowhere and picked me up. Can I get three people to jump to your feet and shout, I waited. I waited. I waited. There's power in waiting. 
I'm going to close this out. Come on, Bishop Larry. I'm going to close this out. Our scripture says, Now unto him that is able to keep me from falling. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to exegete just that part of the scripture. The first word is now. Now. It's an expression of immediacy. Now represents the culmination of the tenses of God. God says, I am he that was. I am he that is. I am he that is to come. But when you start talking about now, in the moment that you're talking, he that was is there. He that is is there. He that is to come is there. It is the place where all of God shows up in the middle of your circumstance. It is the place when the healer shows up. It is the place where the deliverer shows up. It is the time when the way maker shows up. That's why the songwriter said right now if you believe God will right now. Somebody shout now. Somebody shout now. There's an acronym they made out of now, which stands for no opportunity wasted. God uh, will not waste uh, any opportunity uh, to bring glory uh, out of your circumstance. Uh, the nowness of God uh, is real. Uh, the nowness of God uh, means he's there. Uh, the nowness of God uh, means he showed up. Uh, the nowness of God uh, means you are healed. Uh, even while you're sick, uh, you are healed. Uh, even while you're waiting, uh, you are delivered. Delivered, uh, even while you're calling, uh, he's already. Somebody shout now unto him uh, recognition uh, of who him is. Uh, he is uh, my father, uh, he is uh, my savior. Uh, he is uh, my deliverer. Uh, now unto him. Uh, who is him? Uh, one of the kids said, uh, talking about me, uh, when I was coming in the house, uh, him is here. Uh, who is him? Uh, him is here. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, him is here. Uh, Jesus, uh, he's here. Uh, he's here. Uh, when is he here? Uh, right now. Uh, they that cometh, uh, must believe uh, that he is. Uh, I'm glad I know. Uh, everybody don't know. Uh, but I'm so glad I know uh, who Jesus is. Uh, that uh, is uh, able. Uh, he's able. Tell somebody he's able. He's able. Uh, able means uh, ability to perform. Uh, Paul said uh, in Philippians 2, uh, being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will somebody say will will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ you have to believe even while you're waiting he has the ability to do what you're asking him to do if you don't believe he can why are you asking him if you don't believe he's able what are you waiting for if you don't believe he can do it you're wasting your time you must understand uh, that he said uh, with God uh, all things uh, are possible uh, nothing uh, shall be uh, impossible uh, he showed me something uh, as I was looking at the word impossible uh, he says I take the I am uh, out of impossible uh, I capitalize the I uh, I apostrophe uh, and I put an M to it uh, so impossible uh, turns into uh, I'm 
possible. Uh, good God from Zion. Uh, he takes it away. Uh, he splits the word. Uh, he makes your impossible uh, possible. Uh, he makes your mistake uh, not matter anymore. Uh, he makes your issue uh, a place uh, where you can launch uh, to a glorious fire. Uh, somebody uh, shout to me uh, and say no longer impossible. All things are possible. Uh, he is able. He is able. Uh, don't care what you're waiting for. Uh, he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all. You can ask a thing. Uh, I'm almost done. Uh, to keep me, this is what I like. He's able to keep me. He's able to keep me. Sharisha, he's a keeper. I've gone through some stuff. I thought I was going to lose my mind. Only reason I'm still here is because he kept me. Only reason I'm still here because he kept my mind. When I thought I was going to go crazy, he kept my ability to keep worship and praise. He kept me from saying something against my own blessing. He kept me from speaking against my own issues. Uh, he is uh, a keeper. Uh, the Greek word keeper uh, in that sentence uh, translates uh, into isolation. Uh, God uh, will put you uh, in Holy Ghost uh, isolation. Uh, he will protect you uh, from yourself. Uh, he'll protect you uh, from your enemies. Uh, he'll protect you uh, from your circumstances. Uh, he'll protect you uh, from everything that is going on. Uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place uh, of the Most High uh, shall abide uh, under the tabernacle. Uh, high five, hold on, high five him. Uh, tell somebody uh, he's keeping. Uh, he's keeping. Uh, he's keeping me. Uh, I was about to lose my mind. Uh, but he kept me. I was about to go crazy. But he kept me. What did he keep me from? He kept me from falling. He didn't keep me from stumbling. I stumbled, but I didn't collapse. I wobbled, but I didn't fall down. The old commercial said, Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Christians wobble, huh? but they don't stay down. Huh? Paul said, uh, we are troubled uh, on every side, uh, yet not distressed. Uh, we are perplexed, uh, but not in despair. Uh, we are persecuted, uh, but not forsaken. Uh, I am cast down, uh, but I'm not destroyed. Uh, oh, uh, tell somebody, uh, I'm stumbling, but I ain't going to fall. Huh? I'm wobbling, but I'm not staying down. We fall down, but we get up. My subject comes from the commercial. The old woman is lying on the ground, and she hits her panic button, and she says, I've fallen, and I can't get up. I've fallen, and I can't get up. Telling, send somebody. Because I can't get up. But that's not my text today. My text says uh, I'm falling. But. <laughs> Tell somebody I'm falling. But. I can. Get up. I'm falling. But God. I'm struggling. But God. I'm hurting. But God. It hurts. But God. But God. I'm crying uh, in the midnight hour, uh, but God, uh, thanks be to God, uh, which giveth us the victory uh, through our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm falling, but I can get up, uh, and through him, uh, I am more uh, than a conqueror. Uh, I'm down, uh, but I'm getting up. It hurts, uh, but I'm victorious. Uh, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. 
Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Remember, falling means to lose your balance and collapse. But look at me. I lost my balance, Pastor Bill, but I didn't collapse. I stumbled, but I didn't collapse. Though my enemies come and look at me, though I may traverse to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? He is with me. He's covering me. He's protecting me. He's shielding me. He's keeping me from falling. He's keeping me from collapsing. He's keeping me from going all the way out. I'm falling, but I can. Tell somebody I can. I can get up. Somebody give him a get up praise. If you've already given give him a get up praise. Give him a get up praise. Come on. If you got up, if you're getting up, give him a praise. Woo. I dare somebody to shout. Just three words. I got up. 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 Woo! I got up. I fell, but I got up. I fell. I fell. I fell. Come on, give him a three-minute praise. Somebody get crazy for God. Come on, give him a crazy praise. We got two more minutes. We got two more minutes. If you're watching online, I dare you to give him a praise right in your living room, right in your family room, right in your kitchen. Open your door. Let people know you're praising God in your house. What are you praising him for? Because I got up. I got up. I got up. Everybody lift those hands. Oh, somebody, I, I feel like giving God some glory in the house. Hallelujah. I know it's time for us to be off the air. It's time for us to go. People are just still joining. They're still joining. They're still joining. They're still joining. Yeah. God's working. Can we be sanctified, old-fashioned, sanctified? Sometimes they used to tell us, used to think, 
You had to wait for the Holy Ghost to smack you upside the head before you could move your feet. And if you didn't move them up and down, if you moved them side to side, you wasn't saved. You know what I'm talking about, Georgetta? You wasn't saved. You had to move them up and down. But I'm here to tell you, just move for God. I don't care how you move, just move. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Everybody give them an I got up praise. They that have breath and everything. Praise the Lord. And everything. Praise the Lord. Come on, give them an I got up praise. Let them know. I ain't going to sit down on what God's done for me. I ain't going to sit back when God's been good to me. He's been too good. I got up. 